now hopefully all things going well um i have opened up the seacock tap and i've broken the vacuum in the strainer so we should not have any retained water in here so i'm going to take off this hose pipe uh, and as with anything to do with boat engines or any kind of maintenance work it is awkward as ass to get in it I've managed to open the Jubilee clip but this hose is really wedged on tight it's going nowhere in a hurry by my background even though it is the 22nd of June there are still quite a few boats up in the yard mind you the numbers are changing on a daily basis as more and more boats are getting lifted in for the start of sailing season. I'm very happy with my progress considering uh, I am not using any power tools, it's just sandpaper and vinegar for breaking down the um, the barnacle skeletons and trying to buff up a shine on it. It's slow going but at least I know I'm not damaging the propeller by using harsh chemicals or uh, high power tools because I know some people would use the flat plate on an um, uh, angle grinder um, or steel brushes or things like that um, attached to drills and I believe that that causes too much damage and scratch up the surface which means that barnacles can adhere even better um, and that's not what we want <laughs> um, I was also in Marine Parts Direct and got a can of um, anti-foul for the propeller so that can go on before we launch. So upon inspection of our docking lines this is what we found at the area that goes through the fair lead. So I will need to repair this and put on a chafe guard most likely made of denim and the reason why this is chafing so badly was we had a horrendous winter with storm after storm, um, like five storms in a week, for example. So, um, and because I wasn't able to get up to the boat after my broken collarbone and all that, um, I wasn't able to check on a regular basis just how much tension or chafe was happening with our lines um, like I had backup lines over the winter but um, these had been our main ones so as you can see they took the strain a lot with all the storms and gales we had so more jobs to do and apart from cleaning our fenders is we want to change out our fender lines. Uh, we had bought these ones last year. Having the ice splice in one end, great idea for tying onto your fenders effectively. But the other problem, well actually there's two problems. This line is too long. And yeah, you can say, yeah, well, you know, cut it according to your requirements. And that's fair enough. But the other problem, 
is because of its makeup with this twist in it it snags on itself so when you are tying your clove hitch it decides no I like this end of the rope too much and I'm going to twist up on it which when you're trying to do a job quickly and efficiently is a bit of a head wrecker so I'm going to go back to our original design of fender line so instead of this cross twist line like so I'm going to go back to our old fashioned version of fender line which is this type we'll just attach bowline onto the fender and then we can tie this perfectly quickly and with no hassle it doesn't snag on itself like the cross twist type does this is actually we've discovered over trial and error over the years that this is actually the perfect width for a fender line uh, because it is thick enough that it spreads the load and yet it doesn't pinch in or cut into your guardrails okay they're not going to match our docking lines anymore but it doesn't matter it's what works for us is what we're going to use